In this lesson on protein structure from Chapter 4, we want to look briefly at ion exchange chromatography. Recall in a previous lesson, we looked at size exclusion column chromatography. In this case, we want to look at another commonly used method of column chromatography referred to as ion exchange. In this case, the separation is based on charge rather than size. We still have a stationary phase that is a resin contained within the column, but the resin, rather than being a porous bead through which molecules move in and out or might be excluded, it has attached to a group that gives it a net charge. At the top of the slide here, we see our bead is represented by the gray sphere, and to these spheres might be attached different groups. At the top we have diethylaminoethyl. As you can see, the attachment of this group gives the resin a net positive charge. In CM, we have carboxymethyl attached to the bead, and in that case we have a net negative charge. And which type of resin will be used will depend on the conditions and the protein that we're trying to isolate. In this case, molecules of opposite charge will bind to the column whereas others will move through. Anything that has either the same charge or no net charge will not bind to the column. In our illustration at the bottom of the slide here, we have our column. We've applied our mixture of proteins as this brown band at the top of the column. And as the buffer moves through, through by gravity flow, molecules of opposite charge will bind to the column. Let's say we're using carboxymethyl and our resin has a net negative charge and our protein that we're trying to separate has a net positive charge. It will bind to the column and that's represented by the red band here, whereas any other proteins that have either the same charge, a negative charge, or that have no net charge will move through the column and therefore we have successfully separated our protein of interest from and gotten rid of all of the other proteins that we're not interested in. The problem is now our protein is bound to the column and we need to get it off the column. How do we do that? We're going to use a process of competitive displacement. We're going to use the same buffer but we're going to add a high salt to that and the salt will displace the protein. Here's how that works. Remember, our protein is positively charged. We're going to include in our buffer a high concentration of sodium chloride. In this case, there will be a great many more sodium ions that are positively charged than there are positively charged proteins. And so the sodium will bind to the column and the protein is displaced and will come off the bottom of the column. So now we've separated our protein from all of the others in the mixture and we've gotten it off the column. Here's a very good example of where you would need to know a protein's protein will have the net charge you want it to have so that it will bind to the column. You'll see examples of these types of problems in your homework for this chapter. In our next video lesson, we want to examine another method for determining primary structure other than the chemical method known as Edmund sequencing that we saw in, in a previous lesson.